It's no secret that the Valsalva maneuver is not very successful at converting patients from SVT into a sinus rhythm. But what if we could improve your success rate to 43% just with one simple step? Stick with us and we'll show you how. Now, my name is Kevin Travis. I'm an instructor with Master Your Medics. And in partnership with GEMS, we produce this video to give you, the EMS provider, a good understanding of using the modified Valsalva maneuver to be more successful at converting SVT patients into a sinus rhythm, all right? First, let's get a good understanding of what actually happens in the traditional Valsalva maneuver. There's all kinds of different vagal response maneuvers that you can do, bearing down uh, the wet cloth on the face to induce the mammalian dive reflex. But the valve salva maneuver is when you take something and you create pressure in the chest, usually by blowing on it, okay? So a syringe is usually the standard. You grab it and blow and bear down and push as hard as you can for about 15 seconds or so, all right? And in that 15 seconds, what we're doing is we're actually increasing the intrathoracic pressure. All of that pressure inside the lungs is, it can't go anywhere because our, our rib cage, right, is keeping it from expanding out. So as we're increasing our pressure inside of our lungs, we're pushing and we're pushing on all kinds of parts of the heart and receptors and all kinds of stuff like that, right? Let's get a better understanding. So initially, when we bear down and we're blowing in that, that syringe for that 15 seconds, we actually increase the blood pressure because we have all of this blood that's inside of our lungs, inside of the right side of our heart, inside the left side of our heart. And as we're pushing down, we're actually going to increase and push all of that pressure through the system and out through the left side of the heart into the aorta, right? Now, after that, now we've actually decreased the systemic return, right? We've decreased the amount of blood that's coming back through the inferior and superior vena cava into the right side of our heart because we're squeezing down and there's not very much pressure inside those, right? So when we do that and we actually squeeze down, we're preventing a good return of blood to the heart. It ends up causing a decrease in pressure again, right? And then after that, the relaxation phase, after we stop bearing down, now there's all of a sudden this reaction where the vessels are relaxed, everything's all relaxed, there's nothing pushing down, and then the heart feels this drop in the blood pressure, right? And when it feels that drop in the blood pressure, now all of a sudden it kicks up, it starts squeezing a lot harder, now we're getting more vascular return, we're getting more return back into the right side of the heart, all because we've stopped squeezing down, right? So that actually increases our cardiac output at that point. And that increase in cardiac output ends up putting pressure on the baroreceptors in our aorta. So then our aorta pressure increases. And when it increases, it creates a vagal response. And so that's going to create that decrease in heart rate, that decrease in cardiac output, and everything that's actually going to end up taking us out of that SVT and dropping us down, right? It actually, during that vagal response, it decreases the conductivity of the electricity through the AV node, which helps us reset into a normal rhythm. All right, so now we've got a good understanding of what happens there. Let's talk about the modified Valsalva maneuver. So first off, you start in an upright position, right? The patient starts in an upright position, you give them the syringe, and for 15 seconds, they're going to blow. Now, immediately after, not during, after that 15 seconds of blowing, you're gonna lay them supine and put their legs at a 45 degree angle in the air. And that's going to be again for 15 seconds. Now, what does that do? What exactly happens during that additional 15 seconds? So during that 15 seconds, all that blood 
that's in your in your legs and then as soon as you tip and tilt back that blood in your legs it rushes down into your heart and remember we were just talking about the increase after that relaxation period the increase of vascular return to the heart well now what we're doing is we're giving an even bigger kick even more blood rapidly into the heart so during that relaxation phase for about 15 seconds, the heart's getting even more blood than it, what it normally would get, which increases that pressure response. The baroreceptors recognize even more so that increased pressure and it decreases the, the conductivity through that vagal response even more so, right? Pretty incredible. So the evidence behind it is through this REVERT trial. Be sure to look it up, it's very interesting. Uh, Dr. Andrew Applebaum, as well as several other doctors, created a study in England. It was about 10 different hospitals, over 400 patients that all had supraventricular tachycardia. They were not allowed to be in atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. And the patients that received cardioversion were eliminated from the trial. So this is only identifying between the vagal response, excuse me, the Valsalva maneuver versus the modified Valsalva maneuver. And the, the title of it's called postural modification, so that tilting, to the standard Valsalva maneuver, which is the blowing in the syringe, for emergency treatment of SVT, all right? And it was published in The Lancet. Be sure to look it up. It's a very well-written article. Now, let's talk about outcomes and the actual physical changes, because we care about the evidence for our evidence-based pre-hospital medicine, right? So these are the outcomes from that specific trial. So for the Valsalva maneuver, maneuver those patients converted about 17% of the time. With the modified Valsalva maneuver, kicking the legs up in the air, they converted 43% of the time. That is huge. That's about two and a half times two and a half times more effective. You probably have used the Valsalva maneuver several times and it hasn't been effective. It's never been effective for me. I've never converted a patient using the standard Valsalva maneuver. However, when I learned about the modified, all the time I'm converting patients. It works and it works well. Now out of those patients that received the, the Valsalva maneuver versus the modified, how many of them ended up not converting but still needed adenosine? So 60, 9% of patients with just the uh, Valsalva maneuver had to still re receive adenosine. Now, as far as the modified, that's down to only 50%. So that's much less, much fewer patients, right? And then on top of that, the other required antiarrhythmics, uh, depending on what it was and what they identified, they may have been using several different medications for antiarrhythmics, just any antiarrhythmics besides that. 80% of these patients that received the regular Valsalva maneuver still needed those additional antiarrhythmics. Over here, it was 57% of the time. All right, 57%, 57 plus 43, 100%. All right, so it's obvious the modified Valsalva maneuver works and it works very, very well. I hope you integrate this into your practice. All right, if you enjoyed this video, please follow us on Facebook, go to masteryourmedics.com and join us in the membership. And then please check out GEMS and look at all the various articles that we are publishing videos for. There's some fantastic content on there and I hope you follow us.